A quick disclaimer, you should know that this tutorial is for a third party asset. That means that it has Playmaker integration, but its functionality and stability is not completely reliant on Playmaker. These tools have bugs of their own, and so you should always first consult with the developer of that tool first. Also, there may be links in the description for fixes. Hello, and welcome to the Easy Save Save Manager tutorial. In this video, we're going to be learning how to set up a simple save manager using Easy Save. So, in the last video, we had a system set up in which we just had the save, load, and delete features directly embedded onto this chest. And that would just save whether or not the chest was open or closed. We made a couple of buttons here on the canvas, the save, load, and delete, and these sent off global events, which our chest would receive. And then here on the chest, we're using the save all and load all actions, which would save and load all of the variables exclusive to this FSM. So that's one way you could save and load information but it's a little limiting because it's specifically on the FSM that you put these features on. So in this video, we're gonna go over how to set up a manager that can save multiple objects in one pass. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these states. So now our chest just opens and closes. And in this open state, I'm also gonna delete this tween rotation I had. So now we're here with our save, load, and delete buttons. They do this broadcast all that sends off those global events. So let's set up a save manager to receive these events. I'm gonna come in here and right click, create empty, and I'll call this our save manager. I'm gonna add an FSM. And here I'm gonna right click, add global transition, custom events, easy save, loose save. And then the same thing, except this time, we're gonna to go to custom events, easy save, load. Okay, so we have our initialization, our save, and our load. While we're at it, you may as well even add in a delete. So we have all three of our features in here. This one, I'm gonna call it save. This one will be load. And this one will be delete. And we'll just call this init. So last time we were saving whether or not our chest was open. We could do that by coming in to save. And now the way we could do that is by coming over to our variables and we're gonna create a new game object. We'll call this our chest. Okay, and here in the chest, I'm gonna drag and drop our chest lid. Okay, because that's the part that's actually moving, that's actually opening and closing. And now in save, I'm gonna put in a save all. Call this save manager. And in load, we're gonna put a load all and also call this save manager. Again, remember that it's case sensitive. You need to put in the key exactly as it's spelled in both places. And let's play this. So it's closed right now. I'm gonna hit save. So it saved it in its closed position. Now if I open it and hit load again, it closes because that's the last position it was saved in. And similarly, if I play this and then open it, save, stop the game, play it, I can hit load, and it opens up again. Something I would like to point out is that it's saving only this game object, the lid part, okay? That's what our save manager has, the chest. If I put the chest root, right, because our lid is the child of this chest root part, if I save the chest root instead, select our chest, and drag and drop our chest root in here. If I try playing this, it's not going to work because Easy Save is only saving the object we explicitly put in there, not necessarily the children of that object. So I can hit save, open it, hit save. Now it's overriding what my chest value is because it's saying that this base part is what the chest is. Press stop, play again, and hit load, it doesn't open, okay? Because the only thing that's been updated is the base, not the lid. So when you're creating a save system, remember that you need to remember that what Easy Save is saving is the object that it's explicitly told to save. So for us, it's this chess piece. So you're gonna have to come up with clever ways to save the rest of the children of a game object. Okay, so what's cool about this is if I grab this barrel and bring it back into the scene like this, and I add an FSM to it, come over here and we'll make a new string, call this 
barrel name. Let's just make that an input. So during the game, I can come over here and give it a name. And we'll also give it a float. We'll say weight. And we'll make that an input. So we could put in a number of the weight of the contents of the barrel over here. And let's go over to our save manager. And we'll add in a new game object. Call it barrel. And we'll drag and drop our barrel in there. And before we play the game, I'm just going to take our barrel and bring it up a little bit. So if I press play, save it as it's falling, I can hit load, and it'll always load from that position I saved as it was falling. Now if I do let it land, I can come over here and change the barrel name to Bobby Barrel. And I'll say the weight of the contents is 45 units of whatever that means, and then hit save. Okay, so we save that. You can see that our save manager is firing off this save here, doing the save all. Now when I stop this, I'm gonna hit load as it's falling. Okay, skip straight to the floor because that's where it was when we saved it. And you'll see that if I select the barrel, down here it remembers that we named it Bobby Barrel and said the weight was 45. Okay, so now I have the chest lid in our chest game object variable and the barrel is in here as well. So if I hit play, and we let our barrel land, take our barrel, call it Daryl, the barrel, weight is 150. And we open our chest and we save our game. I can stop the game, press play, hit load, and it immediately skips to the barrel being there resting on the floor and our chest is open and barrel is named Daryl and has 150. So you could start saving multiple things in your scene. But this can also get really unwieldy if you have lots of things in your scene. So for example, if you have a system set up that randomly spawns barrels or enemies or even loot, it would be a good idea to add each of those things to an array to their corresponding type. So for example, with this barrel, I'm just gonna zero it out really quick. Okay, and we'll focus in on it up here. And I'm gonna give it a little function that makes clones of itself and puts it around. So if I come over here and do a create object, and I'm just gonna grab that barrel object from my project. So let's drag and drop this in there. And we'll just add in a couple of random floats up here at the top, negative 15, Maximum 15, negative 15, maximum 15. And we'll store this as random X and random Z. And we're gonna use those to set a random vector three. So random V3, setting it with X and Z. And we'll use that position to spawn the barrel. Now we're also going to store that barrel, new variable, called last barrel. So it's going to create these barrels, but what we want it to do is every time it creates that barrel, we want it to send to a manager that adds it to an array of all the barrels that it's created. So what we could do is go over here and create a game manager. Could even help to put our save manager as a child of our game manager, just to say tidy. And in our game manager, I'm gonna add a component, we're gonna add an FSM here, and we're gonna call this our barrel manager. Okay, if I go inside here, I'm gonna add a new event that we can call barrel space slash space add. Okay, this will be a global event, and we're gonna add that global transition here, barrel add, and what we want, and we're gonna add a new variable, an array called all barrels and it's a game object array so now in the state we can do a do an array add and the array that we're adding to is our all barrels and the value that we want to add to it we can make a new variable called barrel to add because over here in our barrel spawner we're going to use a set fsm 
game object that sets the game managers barrel manager barrel to add and we're going to set it with the value last barrel okay so the barrel that we just created it adds it to that and then we're going to do a send event let's do a broadcast all global events barrel add okay so it sets that barrel to add and then it sends that barrel add that means over here in our barrel manager it's told okay there's a new barrel to add and then it sends this event that fires off this state which has the add array so this will be add barrel in that way over time as we add barrels there will be a manager here collecting all of them so if we take this barrel and put in this loop state we'll just loop it like 15 times hit play okay it spawned all these barrels and if we come over to the game manager you can see that we have this array that has all of our barrels in it so now that we have a system that is keeping track of all these things that we spawn remember that you could do this with not just this barrel but you could do it with random items spread out through the scene but you could do it also with the enemies in your game or even the players whatever type of objects that may exist in the scene that there are many of okay we now have a system that keeps track of them so the last thing to do to save the state of those things is to come over to our save manager and when we save we're just going to do a git fsm array okay we're going to put it up here at the top and we'll specify our game manager it's going to be getting the barrel managers all barrels array and we'll store it in a local variable that will be called the same thing so i'm going to come over here and add an array called all barrels we'll just call it the same thing make sure it's a game object array so now over here select all barrels and now it's going to be saving all the barrels that we create so just to really drive this home i'm going to make this floor extra big okay so all of our barrels land on it and i'll make sure that the barrel has a rigid body component on it okay so this prefab now has a rigid body just so we could save that and see how they all fall around and how we could save and load their exact positions and everything okay you could really go crazy here and say that our barrel manager before it even adds an array maybe it could do a select random string and we'll just say that this is Daryl Cheryl and Merrill the barrels and we'll say it's a new string called barrel name and then you do a set FSM string and we're just going to drop this one in because we know that it has this FSM barrel name and it's going to set the value with barrel name okay so it'll pick one of these three names and give it to the barrel that just got spawned all right so i'm just going to take that fsm i'm going to copy that component and we'll paste it in here so all the barrels that get spawned in can also have names and just remove all these actions in here okay because we don't need it to do the thing the spawner was doing we just wanted that fsm so it has the name and the weight Okay, so I'm going to save this, come back out here. Okay, now we should be able to play this. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that the barrel I'm spawning is the prefab. All right. And now I should be able to play this. Okay, our barrels get spawned around. And if I select the barrel, see that down here, this barrel's name is Meryl. This barrel's name is Daryl. That one's also Meryl. That one's also Meryl. That's Daryl, Meryl, Daryl, Meryl. Where's the Cheryl? There's a Cheryl. Cheryl's over here. Okay, so our save manager is almost set up. We get the array of all the barrels and we save it, but we also need to load it. So I'm gonna come over to the load state. And after we load everything, that's when we'll do the set FSM array. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in after it. Now we're gonna be setting the game managers, barrel manager. And the variable that we're setting is all barrels. We're gonna be using the all barrels that we have here locally. So it loads it up from easy save and then sets the barrel manager's barrels. 
And that should work, but I do want to play it to show you. Okay, so those are our barrels. That's where they're spawned in, right? So I'm going to save that. And if I load it, you'll see that more barrels get spawned in. Okay, and that's just because over here on the barrel that's spawning everything, it only has one state. So even this barrel spawner is getting loaded in again when we load, which means that the state is running again. The only thing that we need to do to change that is by giving this a finished event. So I'm going to give this a finished event called next and we'll send off to another state. So it just stays in that next state when we load. Okay, so now I should be able to play. So the way this scene loaded up, there's a couple of barrels over at the edge over here. Uh, one off to our left on the side of the screen and the rest of them are off screen. So if I save this and then if I move this like right here, throw this barrel off the edge, and throw this barrel off the edge, put these ones right here and right here, and then I hit load, everything just goes back to how it was. And you can see that all of the names of the barrels are also retained, so I just put in a simple set name action over here. But if I change this barrel's name from Cheryl to Joe, and then I hit save, change it again to something something like mark if i hit load changes it back to joe that's how you could set up a simple save manager system using easy saves save all and load all actions for playmaker be sure to check out our other videos to learn all the various features of playmaker links to more learning resources are in the description